The centre serves a number of purposes. The main purpose, I think, is to raise the standard of medical education at undergraduate level so our graduates are more skilled, more knowledgeable to practice so that the healthcare of the nation comes up. Another purpose as well is to develop continuing education programmes for existing practitioners in Pakistan. Today we are celebrating the inauguration by the Chancellor of this extraordinary building that was developed, designed and then constructed with the support of the generous donors we have in front of us but also many people who helped in the design and the creativity that goes into developing a center that is equal to any other in the world. I want to particularly express my gratitude to the Chancellor for accepting our request to do this inauguration, but also for the ongoing vision and support and inspiration for this building. I would like to express our gratitude to all those who have supported us, and particularly the donor families, and uh, all the people who were part of the conceptualization from the very beginning. Today, uh, Hazri Imam, you will see a live demonstration of this building. So it's not just the building which is very beautiful, but it's what happens in the building that is, we think, equally, if not more important, and you will have an opportunity to see how we teach here. President. I would like to take this occasion to express my deep gratitude to all those who have supported this institution and who are continuing to support it today. When I decided to launch a university in Pakistan, I had done some homework to try to understand what profile of institution would best fit the needs of higher education in Pakistan. And what was clear was that civil society was underserved in education in Pakistan. And civil society meant all the pillars upon which men and women function in a civil way, how they support each other, how they develop their future, how they create pillars of strength so that institutions can move forwards. And I have to say today that it is a source of immense joy that I have in front of me men and women who are so generous, so thoughtful, and who are so encouraging for what, for what we are all trying to do. To provide high quality medicine in Pakistan was always going to be a challenge by the nature of the country, by the size of the population, by the different areas where people were living from the very hot to the very cold. So it was always going to be a challenge to build an institution that could meet the requirements of the country. I feel sustained and helped and encouraged by your generosity of time and of thought. And I would say to all those who have been so generous in sustaining this institution, please share with us all your thoughts about what we can do, what we might be able to do better, what we should try and correct, and that we should continue to position this institution in its correct place in service to Pakistan. Thank you. We come in with a simulated case, a scenario that we're given at the start of the week, and we study up on it. So it's kind of a peer-to-peer -peer based learning, and that's what we were kind of discussing at the moment right now in the cases that we had. AQ was the first in Pakistan to implement the problem-based learning system. Well, we use problem-solving scenarios uh, in clinical learning sessions.
Simulation is required these days. It's not. It's not just useful. It's it's a necessity for people to be to be taught through simulation. So where there are procedures that maybe involve pain or discomfort, you would expect a degree of competence in the practitioner before they attempt that procedure on a patient. So people have this instinct to be innovative and if there is room for that then you have all sorts of ideas coming through and changes in natural developments in curricula and in healthcare products. So some of the things we are innovating in are some of the clinical simulators that we are devising. We've got uh, open heart surgery simulator that we've innovated. The residents, when they are operating, they feel that they are actually operating on a human being. And once they get the finesse, once they have this uh, this feeling, then we let them operate on under supervision in in the operation theater because they have to learn to operate on real human beings. What we have here is called IC. It is a simulator that helps eye training doctors to develop their skills for cataract surgery. But more than that, it is designed to help develop the hand-eye-feet coordination. This is a skill that we're not born with, uh, but it's something we all develop. And we all have various ways of developing it. And this machine is designed in such a manner that it helps to speed up that process. All of our residents go through this training, extensive training process first, so that we know as trainers that they are safe and they would be able to get good outcomes. Practicing uh, CPR on Menquin makes me more confident when I perform it on real life and when I encounter such patients because I have to be very quick. It gives me uh, more confidence, I don't get anxious and I perform well in this life-threatening emergency. We have a, a remit to serve the professions of medicine and nursing and to serve the population of, Af of Pakistan through providing good quality healthcare education. This will help raise the bar of education and in practice in Pakistan as a whole.